So, <laughs> Games Workshop has had a rough couple of news cycles lately, huh? While, yes, there has continued to be awesome reveals and great new releases, the fact they've been applying more and more pressure to online Warhammer content creators and had the quality of working conditions and compensation of its employees questioned, just goes to show you that Games Workshop is just another company and thus, they are not your friend and don't care about anyone or anything outside of how it affects their profits. So today, I'm just asking one thing. Stop using Games Workshop miniatures. Or rather, stop only using Games Workshop miniatures. Let's clarify. So you know we said that Games Workshop is just another big company? Well, it turns out there's a lot of those, and some of them make some amazing miniatures. While the quality of Games Workshop products is hard to deny, and I definitely have more than my fair share, that doesn't mean that other companies don't have amazing stuff too, and it always really pays to go outside of your comfort zone a bit and give some other figures a good look, because you know, you might like what you find. So I'm not calling for anyone to boycott Games Workshop or anything, but I am saying it's worth broadening your horizons. So today, I will be building some Rudor Warriors, exclusively using non-Games Workshop miniatures and working to fit them seamlessly into my Angmar army while discussing some of my absolute favorite non-GW kits. So, quick rundown on Rudor. Rudor was one of the three splintered kingdoms of Arnor who fell to the evil temptations of Angmar, along with the local hillmen they had been mingling with. A while ago, I built up a little group based on some sketches I did to add some variety to my orc horde. The idea was to keep them mostly militaristic, but with some wilder influences of the hillmen creeping in. I did this by mainly using the Gaelic Warrior Kit from the SPQR line of miniatures. These models are great, with really dynamic poses, and lend themselves really nicely to the theme as they already include both armored and unarmored elements. Then to really bring in the Arnor style, I added spheres and shields from Warriors of Minas Tirith, with the trees scraped off and replaced with a freehand insignia of the Shards of Narsul. So I have built 8 spearmen, 1 captain, and a banner bearer. But to fill up the group, I wanted some swordsmen, 2 handed weapons, archers, and shamans. And with a brief all set, let's go. The bulk of the bodies I used were once again the Gaelic Warriors from SPQR, who I believe are owned by Warlord Games, who, yes, we will be seeing more of today. But in order to bring in some more of that Hill Tribe look, I broke out some of the Frostgrave Soldiers from North Star Miniatures. These guys have a real chunky and wild look to them, in keeping with both Osprey Games' World of Frostgrave, as well as the Wild World of Angmar. The heads added some great variety as they all are very personable and the chunkier bodies helped more prominent units like the Shamans to stand out, particularly when mixed with the Gaelic Warrior's bodies such as the Shirtless Boy I made here. <laughs> Man, it's it's cold up there in Angmar, so he's got to be a bit nipply, eh? I, I mean chilly. Chilly. We'll just cut that out. The other great thing about this kit is the sheer variety. These guys are meant to really lean into the highly customizable game of Frostgrave with tons of different unit options, weapons, and tools and were great bases for stuff like the two-handed weapons. Northstar has tons of great kits in the Frostgrave line, I'd love to pick some more of them up to really build up my reservoir. Speaking of wild-looking boys, nothing says all the kits had to be for humans. And so one of my all-time favorite kits, the Oathmark Orcs, are turning up once again. These guys are fantastic to use in my Orc builds, and while I didn't want to use anything too distinct here, so they didn't end up looking too much like their Orc friends, I did integrate some of the spears, shields, arms, and even a banner pole to add some more rustic looking weapons to the lot. Once again, the Oathmark line, which I believe is also worn by Warlord Games, has some great kits out there, and I really want to get my hands on their human and elves, as well as some of the more undead boys that are coming out. However, while we're talking about weapons, let's have a quick aside, as you don't always have to find alternatives to GW stuff, sometimes you can just steal it. And by steal it, I mean buy it and then press old stuff for more bits. In this case, I opted not to use the Gondor shields again here, and to go for a more mismatched look to lean into both the challenge and the hill tribe style. For future models, I'll definitely look into doing some press molds though, as a, there's no way I'm just going to keep buying Gondor warriors to steal their shields. At least, probably not. There's tons of ways you can do this, either by making your own press molds out of everyday modeling material like green stuff or milliput, using designated molding material like blue stuff, or even crazier things like hot glue. Although I haven't quite got that last one to work yet for me, so there's more work to go there. But back to the models. 
Moving away from the hillier vibes, I didn't want these guys to look too wild, as they would start to lean too much into the orky view. So I once again turned to Perry Miniatures bits, particularly from the War of the Roses kits I've had in my collection for years now. Perry Miniatures are some of the best non-GW model lines to look into when you're first getting into conversions and kit batches, as they tend to fit in really well with the Lord of the Rings range, mostly because they're from the same sculptors, Alan and Michael Perry. These guys are amazing and worked on numerous projects with both Games Workshop and War Games Foundry, with the most lasting influential project, in my opinion, being their work on the Lord of the Rings miniature range. If you have any Lord of the Rings models from Games Workshop, there's a good chance these guys sculpted them, and between their own talent and their direct work with the filmmakers, they did a pretty amazing job. So much so that they even ended up creating their own miniature company, Perry Miniatures, to really lean into their more historical passions. Speaking of which, Michael Perry actually lost his arm in a cannon reloading accident at a historical reenactment they were taking part in. But that was back in 1996, and while certainly a challenge hasn't stopped them from continuing to sculpt and develop their way into their own miniature empire. But enough about them, as these boys are just about done. After basing and a tiny bit of green stuffing, there we have it, a full warband of Rudor warriors, ready to march to war beside my horde of stinky orcs. So with all that said, what should we really take away from this? First of all, no, I'm once again not saying to boycott GW or anything, and you know I'm going to be the first in line to get that beautiful wraithy goodness coming out soon. But I do think you should maybe not just do it by default. If anything, I'd recommend taking some time browsing some other kits out there, be they historical, fantasy, or whatever. Picking out a couple you like and just messing around with them. Whether you're adding them to official Games Workshop stuff or making something all your own, just the act of broadening your horizon can open you up to some amazing stuff and result in models that are more unique and special than most anything else you could build out of a single box. Also, if going over this exercise can lead you to think a bit more critically about the real world nature of our hobby and the people working in it, that's amazing. And I'd recommend checking out a recent episode of the Flame of the West podcast that I actually guested on, where we talk a lot about the subject. Also, maybe take some time to look into what your favorite companies actually do. In the case of Games Workshop, this video by Guy at Midwinter Minis is a great place to start. So for now, thanks again everyone for showing up and taking the time to listen to my rambling, and I hope this has inspired you to look a little bit more out of the box when considering your next hobby project. Thank you to everyone who watches, likes, subscribes, and hits that little bell. And if you haven't done any of those, now is a great time. And tell me all about your favorite non-GW models in the comments below. But of course, as always, a special thanks has to go out to my patrons, and particularly this month, Jeremy, our newest contributor. So if you want to check out what we're doing over there, as it is pretty awesome, hop over onto the page and take a look. You may like what you find. Also got some affiliate links below with some of my favorite tools and inspiration sources that I use, and using those will give a little kickback to me and the channel here without a single dime coming out of your pocket. Just uh, another way to take a little bit of money away from Big Daddy Bezos. But for now, have a good one everyone, and catch you all next time.